21 days after the New Mexico dress rehearsal, a lone B-29 was over Hiroshima carrying an atomic bomb. military traffic trudged the survivors of vanished Hiroshima, the first city in history to be atom bombed into oblivion. The nuclear industry announced itself to the world at Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. In the years that followed, the world went mad for nuclear technologies. It is with pride that I now open Calder Hall, Britain's first atomic power station. But ongoing accidents? the threat of nuclear war and the still unsolved problem of radioactive waste have greatly slowed the development of the industry. Global warming has given the embattled nuclear industry a new lease of life as it tries to present itself as a solution to the crisis. At the same time, nuclear weapons are proliferating as more and more countries get the bomb. There is growing pressure for Australia to increase our participation in the nuclear trade. I think this nation has to look at the nuclear option. I'm not a frightened of that. I'm not ruling, ruling out power stations anywhere in this country. The nuclear chain begins with mining. Australia has around one third of the world's uranium and supplies close to 20% of global demand. This amount could be about to increase. The Roxby mine in South Australia is the country's largest. It is licensed to take 42 million litres of water every day from the Great Artesian Basin. This is damaging the mound springs of the Arabana people. These places, when they put the boar filet and all that in and started taking the water, we used to come up here a lot to check this. And, uh, and it's good to see it still there, you know what I mean? This used to flow right back here as well. BHP Billiton is now seeking to expand its operation at Roxby. This would mean a tripling of production, water use and waste. The power of the reactor suddenly increased. There was a considerable discharge of steam and the subsequent reaction led to the formation of hydrogen, its explosion and the destruction of the reactor and the accompanying radioactive discharge. Here at 1.26 a.m. on the 26th of April 1986, Valery Ilyich died, the first victim of the Chernobyl disaster. Far from being the solution to global warming, the world's nuclear facilities actually pose a major threat if sea levels do rise as predicted. More than half the world's reactors are at sea level, and even small rises put them at risk of flooding. Much of the waste left behind by reactors is reprocessed. This is the most energy intensive and polluting part of the nuclear chain. This coastline is one of the most radioactive environments in the world. Radioactive effluent is discharged down this pipeline into the Irish Sea. Around the pipeline, it's highly radioactive. Well, I'm getting a reading of 40 counts per second here, which is uh, really quite considerable. Waste from the Sellafield plant in the UK can now be found in the fish of the Irish Sea, in the Arctic ice cap, and in the vacuum cleaner dust of coastal houses. That's uh, taken from your vacuum cleaner, is that right? Yes. Good, thank you very much. In fact, you wouldn't expect to find any plutonium in dust in a house, and we found plutonium and americium in this dust. Dum dum, diddle dum dum, diddle dum dum, diddle dum dum. There was a turtle by the name of Bert, and the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. 
We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it, just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. Yep. And cover. Familiar mushroom cloud snakes skyward, hurling the atom's deadly radiation high into the heavens. Sound and shock waves roll over the men huddled in the trenches. First, you duck. And then, you cover. Since the end of the Cold War, concerns about nuclear proliferation have slowed, but the proliferation has not. Ten countries have now produced the bomb. There have been many attempts over many years to deal with the problem of nuclear waste, but there is still no solution. There have been several proposals for national and international radioactive waste dumps to be built in Australia. The most recent federal proposal to build a low to medium level dump in South Australia failed. Now the government's sites have moved north. Famous worldwide for icons like Kakadu and Uluru, the Northern Territory could soon be home to another international icon, a radioactive waste dump. The current proposal is for a low to medium level dump, but there are concerns that it could be later expanded to accept high level waste from around the world. There are currently four sites under consideration. Mount Everard, in the Aranda language, called Ultira, which is the dream time. If this is the chosen site, what I'm afraid of is the desecration of the land, and that is what we try to preserve, our heritage through the land, because the land is our heritage. See, Margaret in our good country, a lot of bush for everything. We don't want no waste dump, we don't want no mines, we don't want no waste dump, this is a big crime. Yeah, In September 2004, the Minister for the Environment gave an absolute categorical assurance that there would be no dump in the Northern Territory. He broke that promise. The government has continued to break promises and try and take away Territorians' rights to act, to speak. At the moment, it is a time of choice in Australia. We can choose to be a clean, clever country. We can choose to be responsible and democratic. We can choose to be respectful for the planet, for human rights, for the future. Or we can sit back and become the world's largest radioactive quarry and nuclear dump. Land rights, not mining rights. Stop Jabaluka mine. Land rights, not mining rights. Uranium has always been and remains a controversial and contested industry. And the majority of Australians are opposed to plans for nuclear power and radioactive waste dumps. This community concern and opposition has stopped dumps in South Australia and mines at Jabaluka and elsewhere. Uh, I welcome the fact that three prominent Australian businessmen have formed a company to look at the issue of nuclear power generation. Now more than ever, there is a need to act for a different vision for our country and to work for a safer and cleaner energy future. But well, we haven't started on them yet, we haven't finished. We'll give them a run for their money. They don't give up yet, don't give up hope that we can't stop these mobs because that's what we're going to do. And uh, so I'm starting to enjoy it now because I think the best is yet to come. So we've got a bit, uh, good actions coming up and then when we win it, I'll put on a party for you. We will have a party in the desert. We'll have one down the lake and we'll have one up here, we'll have it all the way down. Hold on you, mate. Nagasaki's war-making power was totally destroyed. For the valley area of little more than three square miles, blast and fire reduced the industrial plants and surrounding buildings to blackened rubble. On this spot, outlined in stone, is a figure representing the average man, regardless of his race or creed. 
These atomic footprints on the sands of time can never be erased. They point a path which leads to unparalleled progress or unparalleled destruction.